So are we ready to cry together? Well, I had to pull out my big boy needles from my big boy language that I may drop later, but I'll try to edit that stuff out. And I was really confused by the photograph here. So when originally I thought, okay, I'm going to tackle this thing. I'm like, how in the... did they get that? <laughs> here I go. So I started working on this last night, as I mentioned, and I had uh, about six false starts. So I kept getting confused. So I was kind of being lazy. So I had to come up with the concept of how am I going to remember the steps and what exactly is a knit one below. So that was a new thing for me. And later on, we're going to do a PSSO, a pass slip stitch over at the time right now as I'm filming. I don't know what that means, but we'll figure it out. <laughs> I'm going to be using a thicker yarn to demonstrate this stitch concept. Uh, it is using a five and a half millimeter circular knitting needles. And what it is, is that the wire um, with the needles is about 29 inches. So this is just a 16 one. So you need wider so that you can get all of the, the stitches when it goes into the full diagonal here. It's actually not a hard pattern, but I think you have to be organized when it comes to this thing. So it's like any big pattern out there. So if you want to do a, a whole screen right now and just put me on pause so you can write down some information, it would be kind of awesome. And I did this little check sheet so that I can get seven, eight, nine, and 10. That's the repeat and the increase. And I just gave myself a mental note of what the stitch is to start. Rows number seven and nine are the same row. So once I get that into my thick head, I'll be able to understand that. And I got it in my thick head so far. <laughs> so, and then I put on how I finished so that I'm just keeping in line. So these seven and nine are the same row. I also wanted to make a mention of it when it is the right side. So we're gonna be uh, posting that on there. We'll be putting on a stitch marker when we get moving on this thing. Because I think once you understand when you can physically look at what is right side and wrong side, it'll help you. But I think as I keep on going on this thing, I'll be able to identify it, but I'm too new at, uh, at knitting to be able to identify anything. <laughs> so before I really get into this thing, I just finished uh, filming this. Proud of myself. Um, this video will have lots of sarcasm and some self-beating up comments, so just be aware of that. Um, but I was a big boy and didn't use any big boy words like I thought I was going to because I'm pretty good with that. And really, really happy with this. And I learned a lot, like a lot. I know. I think I'm done for the day. Um, so tonight, it's just lunchtime in my time zone, but um, tonight is um, stitch night and pub night. Can we just sti uh, skip the rest of the day and just go right to pub night? <laughs> continue on with this tutorial so just grab a spare piece of yarn and we're going to mark the right side so the mark the right side is row number one three five or seven and i'm not going to mark the right side right away because um, i'm going to mark it a little bit later and i'll tell you that in here as well so let's grab our yarn so i'm going to cast on and we're going to create a slip knot if you need to know how to do slip knots beginner stages of knitting we have that and just place that onto your circular knitting needles. I'm just using the wooden sticks today because I might have to stab something, possibly a vampire by the end of this thing. <laughs> so I'm going to just cast on and um, I'm going to just create two stitches. So this is considered one and I'm going to make the second. And I prefer a twist cast on when I go. So if you have a different method, then please do that. I'm gonna look back one day and look at these videos and say, what the, what was I thinking? Because I might learn stuff in the future. An old dog can learn new tricks. This was row number one. Sorry, this was the cast on of two stitches. And let's begin row number one. Let's begin row number one. We're going to do the, this is the right side of the work, but we'll worry about that later. And we're gonna do a KFB. If you're thinking KFC, <laughs> um, you're in my boat because I'm immature. And it's KFB that's uh, knit, front back and what we're doing is we're doing an increased stitch so you're going to go in as if you're going to knit so you go in so the needle on the right is on the back side and you wrap that and you flip it forward but don't slide that off yet and what you have to do then at this point is take this needle and in the same stitch you want to just go into the back side of it so just kind of maneuver things and get that point to go into the same stitch but come in from behind so this is the back and you're just going in on the back side. So you're just going in the front door and through the back door. Okay. And then you're going to knit again. And so you are going to, or just wrap and go through And when you pull through, just pull this one a little bit tighter and it should be on your needle. 
miracles happen every day. And now you've just converted this one loop here to be two. And now you're officially done that. And now you can slide that loop off. And then the next one is just a knit one. So it's just go in and do your knit stitch. And we'll be demonstrating this front back again. And so you wrap and pull through. So it's a knit stitch. And look at that, you got three stitches. So there you go. So let's change hands and let's move on to row number two. Row number two, I recognize this. <laughs> it's a knit stitch. So we're gonna knit every one of the stitches. So we're not doing an increase and we're just going to do the knit stitch for all three stitches. Oh my goodness, there's hope for this old dog. And so we have just completed then row number two. So there's three stitches, change hands, and let's begin the third row. Third row, we're going to do a KFB twice and then a knit one. So there's only three stitches. So the first stitch will be KFB. The next one will be KFB. So it's knit uh, front back, knit front back. So we're gonna convert this into two stitches, this into two stitches, and we're going to knit that last one. So let's do KB front back. So wrap and pop through. Don't uh, slide it off yet. Maneuver and go into the same stitch on the back. Okay, so you're going into the same one. Wrap it and pop through. Okay, and so you, you did it once. And this is how we're doing in our increases on this one. We'll do the same here. So we're gonna knit stitch but don't slide, we're gonna do a KFB. So then put this one back through the same. Okay, so you're going into the front uh, front door to the back door and coming in. Keep this tight, it'll help pull it onto that needle here. And then you can slide that loop off. See, so those two stitches that we just had end up creating four because you two and two, and then you knit that last one. And that was then the third row. Let's turn our work and do the fourth. Okay, let's blow really hard. Let's in, breathe, and out, and in, and breathe. And let's try the fourth row. We're going to do a knit one below. If you've never heard of it, you're in my club. So you're in the right channel today. <laughs> so we're gonna knit two, it says K2, that means knit two. So you're gonna knit two stitches in a row. So you just do your knit stitch in the first one and then knit the next. Now, those two are on there. The knit one below is really kind of hard to see it when you're first learning for the very first time, and I don't even know how to show you. But usually what we do is we go and we knit into this stitch here, but we want to knit just below it, so we're going down, and you have to trust in it. So. Just, I'm trying to see if you can see some space. So if you pull down like this, do you see that there's a space there? Let me just put something white in behind there. Do you see that there's a, let me just see if I can get that angle there. Do you see it? It's right there. And so what you're going to do is when you go to knit, you're not going here, but you're going below right here. Okay, see this vert uh, horizontal line and this vertical? You're going just after it. And you just go right in. I'll demonstrate this a few times because we have to keep doing this kind of concept. This is what's creating those big lines. So we're going to wrap the needle and you're going to pull through that. Make sure that you do not leave this horizontal on there because I was doing that and creating a mess. So just pop it and make sure you're just pulling through the yarn that is been wrapped only. And once you have that done, you release it off. And that was a knit one below. And I'll demonstrate it further on in this tutorial. So then the last two stitches are a knit two. So you can breathe again. So breathe in and knit the next one, breathe out. And what you're going to notice on this whole thing is that we don't increase every row uh, because it's knitting, it takes a little bit longer than um, crochet to grow out. So not every row is an increase, and we'll be talking about that later. So let's move on to the fifth row. Let's change hands and go to the fifth. You're going to notice the knit one below never appears 
uh, on the uh, on every row, only every other row. So in this row, knit no, uh, number five, this is going to be the repeat that you'll have in the increase all the time. And so row number five stays consistent, and once you can get it into your head, it's a lot easier. So row number five, we're going to do a KFB first, so a knit front back. So let's just wrap and come in. And we're not done with that, come in the back, uh, front door to the back door and grab that same one again and convert that into two stitches. Look at this, you think I was a professional or something? Professional idiot. <laughs> so now it says to knit all until the last two stitches. So this is going to happen over and over. So every other row you'll have this holiday. So slide this one off before you continue. And so you're gonna knit all the stitches except for the last two stitches uh two stitches on the needles so just knit let's whistle dixie i don't know what that means but i heard it somewhere and so they got the last two stitches the second last stitch will be the increase stitch so we always increase on the first stitch here but on the opposite side here on on our fifth row it's going to be a knit kfb or, or kfb yeah that's right so it's going to be a kfb so you're just going to wrap and go through the front door to the back door and do that increase that you need to do. Okay, so that's always gonna be the second last stitch and then the last stitch is always gonna be a knit stitch. And now this is where I want you to hold and I want you to mark this side. This is an odd number, so therefore it's the right side. So remember that little strand here? If you have a crochet hook or something, maybe a tapestry needle, I want you just to put it through something here and just kind of attach it. So every time you see this, you're going to notice is that you're on the right side of the work. And when you're doing the increase here on an odd number, which is five, seven, nine, all of those, you're always going to notice that that's in the right side and that's the same stitch work that you'll have to do. And so this will make it your life a lot easier. Let's turn and go into the sixth row. So the sixth row is the row before the repeat starts and we're gonna get ourselves established and now creating the texture. So the row one below was texture but also pearl ones are going to be texture as well. And that's what we're gonna establish. So we're going to start and we're going to knit the first two. So one, and two. It then says purl one. So if, if you're that new, just take this yarn and take it over top of the, the, the right needle and bring it to the front before you do the purl. And the purl, you're going to stick the needle in the top side and out towards here. Remember, we have slower tutorials in this kind of concept for stitches, just like purl. So you wrap the needle and flip it to the back. And before you carry on this yarn, here, we need to take it back to the back side. The next one is going to be a knit one below. So you can see it now here. Let me grab a crochet hook. It's right here. Do you see that? So you're gonna jam the needle through right to the back side. I find the first time you do a, a knit one below, um, on near the uh, beginning of a row, it's kind of a, P, a PETA. You can look up the acronym for that, but all the rest of them will be very easy. This is already a knit back, uh, uh, a knit one below, and this is what's creating those lines in the in the project. So just stick the needle through. Okay, that space. It's not through the one on the needle, and just knit stitch, and pop it through, and make sure you only grab the yarn that has been wrapped and let everything else slide off. You're then going to purl the next one, so you have to move the yarn forward and purl. And then the last two on your knitting needles will be a knit stitch, so move the yarn back and knit stitch. Now, I'm gonna bring you back to my sheet that has been sitting off camera there, underneath that uh, 
pink crochet hook because now um, you're going to see it. So this here is going to create the lines that you'll see and we're going to be making new lines as this thing gets bigger. Let's go to my sheet now. So I found it was a lot easier just to make a handmade sheet like this. If you want to do something on a computer, you can. So rows number seven and nine is the same thing as row number five. You're going to start off with the K of B and then you're going to knit all the way across the row and the last um, uh, two stitches um, will be a KFB first and then the last stitch is going to be uh, a knit one. And that'll happen every time you're doing rows number seven and nine. In row number eight, you're going to knit the first two, then a K1B, that's knit one below, and then you are going to continue to alternate throughout the pattern to be able to go through and I'll show you what that means. Okay, so you're gonna go all the way through. And then the last um, three stitches, the third last stitch is going to be K1B, knit one below, and then knit two. In number nine, it's the same thing as seven, so it's an easy. And I also put that it's RS, it's the right side. So when you see that stitch marker, you'll be able to see where you are. And so if you can just understand this particular rows, you're gonna notice that you can probably speed through the increase rows. So we are only increasing the project every other row, not every row. Then finally for row 10, there's just a sequence difference. It's a knit two, purl one first, and then a K1B, and then it'd be purl one, K1B, and et cetera, all the way to the end. And the last two stitches is a purl one, or sorry, the last three stitches is a purl one, okay? And then K2 right at the end. So uh, that means knit two. So let's begin row number seven and keep your check sheet handy. So row number seven is the same thing as row number five. So you're going to start with a KFB, knit front back in the first stitch. Okay, so don't release it yet and do the back uh, front door to the back door. I just stay stuff like that to help me remember. Okay, and then you're going to then um, go down. Okay, so now we're going to knit the remaining except for the very final two stitches. So just whistle your Dixie all the way and knit all the way to the end of the row. So every other row you kind of get a holiday like this until you see two stitches left. So the second last stitch is going to be a, a knit FB, so KFB. So knit, don't release it, go through the front door to the back door to, to do your increase. Somebody's gonna crucify me for coming up with new <laughs> sayings. So we're gonna do that. Okay, so those just became two stitches. And then finally, you're gonna knit the last one. So you'll keep repeating this every time you're on row number seven and number nine. And let's turn our work and begin number eight and check that off on your sheet. Check. So whenever you have an eighth row, there just is gonna be wider each time you, you do an eighth you're going to start and you're going to knit the first two in a row. Okay, and this is considered the wrong side. So, and you can tell that because the stitch marker is not on this side. So then you're going to knit one below. And as I said, the first one out is always kind of the hardest one I, I noticed and it's fetching the light, but it's right through here. Okay, so just kind of pull it apart if you don't see it. Okay. That is right there and that's where you're going to go and stick your needle and you're going to knit the one below there and make sure that you don't get that horizontal with it your next one is then going to be a purl so move the yarn in front and purl and I found in my practice last night that you'll be able to see these purls pretty easily in the future the next one is a knit one below so it's going to increase the number. And now see, see how much more open that is? Mm -hmm. I find the ones that are in the middle of the row are a lot easier than the first one that you do. Then purl. And then the third last one before you get to the end is going to be a knit one below 
It's right there. Do you see it? And then that will leave you two stitches. And so the last two will be a knit stitch each. And that was row number eight. I'm making this look simple because last night I was ready to burst into tears. <laughs> and there you go. So the lines that you see in the project, do you see? They're coming up there. And let's turn and let's check that off on our list. Check. And let's do number nine. So number nine is the same as number five, the same as number seven. So the first one is a KFB. Front door to the back door. Easy to remember, right? You're also looking at the right side of the work and you can tell that by the stitch marker. And then you were going to knit then the remaining of the row until you get to the last two stitches. So for those that are uh, new to me knitting, I, I am learning, I am making some mistakes as I go. And I think the whole point of learning a new thing is to be able to understand it. And so I've had some people say, well, you know, you should learn knitting more. And you know, the truth is yes and no. Um, I think why not try to teach others as I'm learning to make it more authentic to somebody that may be struggling and also seeing a host struggle. <laughs> That's my story, I'm sticking to it. So you have the two stitches left. So the second last one is gonna be a KFB because I look at these uh, symbols and these uh, these abbreviations, I'm like, what the hell is that? <laughs> so a KFB is the second last one, and then you're gonna knit the last one, and that was number nine. Okay, look at that, eh? Mm -hmm. And let's turn to work and begin number 10 and check that off on your list. Let's begin the 10th row. You're going to knit the first two stitches and you're on the wrong side of the work, so you're gonna knit the first two stitches. It says K2, and then it says P1. What, what is P1? P is short for purl, so move the yarn in front first, and then purl. Okay, and now you're alternating between purl and K1B, knit one below. So if you're not purling, you're below. So we're gonna purl, move the yarn back and go one below. And do you see how open that is? It's always these, it's always the start of these knitting projects that's so tight. And I don't think it's necessarily your host. <laughs> I whistle as I walk. So, uh, and you can use your mind for that. So you're gonna get that one and then you're gonna purl. So do you see the line in front? So that's a purl. And then you're going to knit one below. So move the yarn back and come in below, right there. Do you, and now that you can identify, do you see the line is coming up? So you'll be able to identify those the more that you get onto your needles. And you're gonna move all the way across in this formation. So you're purling. I'm gonna knit one below. When I started doing the knit one below last night, I was like, oh my God. What did I get myself into? So you'll go all the way in that same, just alternating between the two stitches until you see three stitches left. The third last stitch is going to be a purl one, and that's because we were just in the row below. So we're maintaining the pattern. So we're gonna purl one below, if I could just wrap the damn thing. And the last two stitches are going to be a knit stitch. So move the yarn back and knit. So just for your stitching pleasure, I'm going to go through rows number seven through 10 one more time because there's more on the, the needles to work with and then I can show a decrease at least twice in a row. So it kind of looks like a mess at the very beginning. That's because everything is really tight, um, but you'll notice is that it looks amazing once it gets more relaxed as it goes. So let's turn and let's go back to number seven. So let's check 10 off our list and do number seven. So let's do row number seven. It's the same as number five, same as number nine. And you're always gonna start with the increase of a KFB to begin. You're on the right side of the work as well. So you're gonna go in and then you're going through the front door to the back door. So it's a KFB converting that one stitch into two. And then you're just gonna knit and whistle your Dixie all the way across, except for the fi final two. Can't believe I'm knitting. 
<laughs> Actually, I'm pretty proud of myself. It's always something I've kind of wanted to learn and I always thought it was too hard for me. Um, I'm a simple-minded person, generally. Um, I'm very analytical, but I can be very simple when it comes to these kind of skills. So I'm proud of myself more than anything, even if you're not. So I keep knitting until I see two onto the needle. So what is the, gonna happen in the second last one? Can you tell me? Yes, you're gonna go get your bucket of chicken with the K up B. <laughs> so you're gonna K up B that one. And it gets easier to K up B in, in, the, in the end, once you get used to it. So that one, and then what are you gonna do with that final stitch? Yeah, you're gonna continue to knit that last one. And that was row number seven again. The only difference is that it's wider. Turn your work check it off on your list and let's do number eight. Let's do number eight. We're on the wrong side of the project. You can tell that by the stitch marker and you're gonna knit the first two. I'm actually starting to get in the swing of this. So you knit the first two. Okay. And then what's the next one? It's a knit one below. So I always find it's kind of a hard one, the first one, and it is right. It's a little tighter, see, it's right there. You see, 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 it's right there. So jam your needle through and knit one below and make sure you're only grabbing the strand that's been wrapped and then slide it off. The next one is a knit, or sorry, as a purl one, so you just move the yarn in front. And so you can physically see it. Um, the rows are now starting to make sense. And so you can see that this is a purl. And if you can't, just trust in it. So the next one's a purl, and then a knit one below is your next one. And so you can kind of see you're doing your knit ones below and you pull it and you can go right there. Slide off, this one's a purl. So you're gonna alternate between the knit one below and the purl all the way across. And it's going to be the, th uh, the three stitches at the end that you gotta just change up your work a little bit. So then go back and knit one below. It's creating that beautiful line work. That's what you're seeing in that, that visuals, is that line, these lines. So then purl. And knit one below. Okay, and then finally, um, okay, I got four left, Never mind. <laughs> Okay, so I'm looking for my th three stitches at the end. So what we have here is that we're gonna knit one below, which is the next one. So I got three left. So the third last one is a knit one below. And then the last two are going to be a knit stitch. And this was duplicating number eight all over again. And so we've increased a little bit more. You can kind of see things are working out. Let's turn to work and do number nine is check that off on our list. Let's begin number nine. It's that increased row that we know and we're on the right side of the work. So it's a KFB to start us off. Okay, and then we're gonna whistle Dixie and just knit all the way until the second last to the um, two stitches left on there. Now I don't understand, and that's because I'm so new at knitting, why they increase on the first stitch here and why they do the increase on the opposite side on the second one. So I really don't know that answer. Um, I don't know if I really care that much either. <laughs> um, but there's gotta be a method to the madness because the people that design this stuff actually know what they're doing versus a user like me that's just following these instructions and hoping to God I don't drop a stitch. Okay, so keep on moving. So just keep moving your uh, loops down your needles. And as you get bigger and bigger, your uh, circulars are going to be holding up more and more. So the second last one is going to be a KFB. And then your last one is what? It's going to be a knit stitch. Mm-hmm. And that concludes that. That was number nine all over again. And see, look. It's actually double-sided. 
check it off number nine now let's do number 10 and then i'm going to show you 10 and then we're going to start doing a decrease to um once you're ready for that so i gotta go pee really bad but i'm so excited about this i'm just crazy um number 10 you're going to start and you're going to knit the first two then you're going to purl the first one or sorry the next one that you're going to purl and then once you get that first purl done if you could just wrap it and it holds um, once you get the first purl one um, you're then going to start doing your uh, knit one below okay so this knit one below and you can see the lines are clearly in the project now so that's a knit one below the next one has to be a purl So if this old dog can learn this, I think you probably could too. Okay. And that one below. So don't get distracted too much that, um, that you start to do the wrong stitches. Okay, and knit one below. And so you're doing this all the way until you get to the three last stitches. You get your third last stitch. So the third last one is going to be a purl one. And then knit the final two. So K2, knit two. And this will be the end of the 10th row once again. So your blanket can be any size. If you have thick yarn like this, I don't even know the size of my needles, but they're big. Um, but yeah, you can see that. So what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to talk about the increase and then uh, what you need to do. And then when you're ready for a decrease, you can come back to this video and cry some more. <laughs> and I better go pee real quick and check that off on your list too. Don't forget to do that. Okay, so I'm back. I just pet my kitty on the way back to calm me down a little bit. Um, I'm actually not doing too bad. I was really stressed last night. So you're going to repeat the seventh to the 10th round until the straight edge, get that a gay host, straight edge measures 46 inches. So uh, when you're doing this, you're going to notice is that it's going to um, be like this on your knitting needles. And so this edge right here should be 46 inches. If you want to change the size, just make sure you end on a 10th uh, row so that you can get yourself ready for the decrease. So here's my worksheet and this matches this section up here. And it's rows number one, two, three, and four. Rows number one and three, just like it was an, uh, an odd number for up here is the right side of the work, just so that you know. And so rows number one and three are always gonna be the same. So that's a nice easy uh, re uh, memory to be able to keep in your head. So KFB will increase the stitch on this side of the work, but then you're gonna do a purl two together on the, using the last two, our last three stitches. You'll uh, use two stitches and make it a purl two together, and then you'll knit the final one. And you'll do that each time. It's either row number one or three. Row number two, we're gonna get back to the wrong side of the work where the first two are in knit two together, or sorry, knit two. And then uh, K1B, so knit one below, and then purl one, and you keep alternating between these two. And then finally, the last three stitches, the third last one is a K1B, and then you'll knit the last two. On row number four, here, you're going to K2, so knit two, purl one, and then knit one below, and then purl one, knit one below, and keep all the way to the other side. And then here, it's just a purl one, and then K2, so the last three stitches of purl one and then K2. So we're gonna try and we're gonna do this section to make it a rectangular shape. Remember one and three is the same information. So as you start number one, you're going to start with a KFB. So this is gonna be the side that will continue to go up and this side will um, continue then to decrease, okay? So this side is building, so we're gonna do a KFB to start. And then you're going to knit all the way across until you get to the last three stitches. So just whistle your Dixie of knitting across. 
So I'm just continuing to look until I get three stitches on the needle. Once you have then um, this here, we're going to purl two together, okay? So to purl two together, to purl, you have to move the yarn in front first, and then stick your hook, or sorry, your needle, sorry, I'm used to crochet, stick your needle through the first one and the second one at the same time. So get both of them so that they're both on to the front needle. Wrap the yarn and pull through, or so go around. <laughs> God, I got crochet in my head, I wonder why. So I'm gonna purl two together, and then you're going to knit the last one. So just move the yarn back and knit your last one, and this will be then row number one. So on one side, we did the increase, and on this side, we're doing a decrease. And let's turn and let's do row number two and check it off on your list. So let's do number two. You're going to knit the first two, and then we're going to do our knit one below, so a K1B. So it's like you know already, so go below. And once you get the first one to start it like this, you know that the next one has to be a purl. So then you alternate between the two stitches once again. So back and then knit one below. So you could knit a baby size blanket. I don't know if I, I don't, I know I probably will never make a grown adult size blanket, uh, just for time reasons, but a uh, baby size is probably doable, especially a thicker yarn like this. So you're gonna get the th uh, three last stitches at the end. So you're gonna knit uh, one below and the third last one. And then the final two are going to be uh, uh, knit each. So K2, knit two. And this was row number two. Okay, so you can kind of see that it's starting to come up here and this side is still increasing. So check it off in your list and let's do number three. Let's do row number three. It's the same as the first row that we started with. And so you're gonna start and you're gonna do a KFB to begin. So we're gonna do an increase on this side. So first one and then the front door to the back door. And then you're going to whistle your Dixie of just knitting all the way until you get to the last three stitches on the knitting needles. So I got my last three. So in the last three here, we're going to purl the two together. So you're going to put the yarn in front first and then purl the two. So stay on the front side and collect both of the loops. And purl those two together. And then you'll knit the last one. And that was row number three. Let's pull it out and see what it looks like. Awesome possum. And let's turn, I've already turned, and let's begin number four and check that off in your list. Number four, you're going to knit the first two. And then you're going to do a purl one, and that starts our sequence. So we'll do a purl one. You can see the stitch work, how it's working out. So you'll purl one, and then the next one is a knit one below. Now that the lines are really clearly in the project, it's, I think it wouldn't be hard. I think that it'd be harder to screw it up if you're paying attention to the visuals, but your life could be structured differently that you get distracted easy. I don't know, you can let me know in the comments if you even get this far in the video. <laughs> Okay, so you're just alternating between the two and you're looking for the last three stitches to be on the, the needle. So I've got four here. So I'm knitting one below and I have my three stitches left. So the third last one is going to be a purl. And then you're gonna knit the final two together. Or sorry, a final two on their own, sorry. like that.
and then we're going to turn it work and then I'm going to show it decrease one more time. So check number four off and we're going to go back to doing row number one through four one more time. So let's do row number one again and this is continuing to make it a rectangle. So you can do run one through four and remember it says to the one side will be 58 inches in the distance if you want that. So you're going to start off and you're going to KFB. So you're going to do your knit front back, the first one, so to create your increase. So this is the side that you would measure your 58 inches on. And then you're gonna whistle your Dixie and go all the way until you get to the three last stitches on the needle. Once you get your three last stitches, um, you're going to purl the, the next two together And then your last one is a knit one. And then that's it. So that's row number one. Again, so check it off on your list and let's move to number two. Okay, let's do number two. You're going to knit the first two. And then you're going to knit one below. So it's right here and you can see the line, how it's going straight up. So knit one below, it's nice and easy to see that now. And then, so then start alternating between your purls and your knit one below for the remaining of the row until you get to the last three stitches that are on. So once you get the last three, you're going to knit one below on the third last one. And then the final two are just knit in each one. And this was row number two all over again. So don't worry about how this is pulling. It's just because it's not done, um, but it'll be square. So let's continue and let's check that off on the list and go to number three. Number three, it's an increase side. So you'll knit front back. My worry is that once I get used to the knitting that I'm gonna speed through these tutorials because I'll know what I'm doing and yet you're probably not. So once you get the first knit front back, then the rest of it, whistle Dixie and just do your knit stitch until you get to the three last stitches on the other needle. Um, I've had people lecture me too that I need to learn to do continent so I don't need to learn to do nothing. Um, this is the way that my mom showed me as a kid. It's the way my grandmother um, knitted. This is um, traditional English or this is English knitting. So I'm gonna stick with what I'm most comfortable with. And I think with any hobby or anything, you gotta stick with what you're most comfortable with. And if you do wanna learn Continental, I'm not your host to do that here. I wanna just stick with one method and just go with it. And Continental is apparently faster. And I would probably agree with that. It's just, I wanna do it this way. So once you get your three um, last three in there, you're going to move the yarn forward and purl the next two together. So you're eliminating out a stitch by doing that. And then you'll knit your final one. And this was row number three. And then we're gonna do row number four, which is the final of that sequence. Pretty, uh, this makes it really thick. Let's uh, try number um, four one more time. Let's do number four. We're going to knit the first two. And then we're gonna purl one, and that will kick you off on your sequence between your purling and your knit one below again. So just go below. I can't believe how much more relaxed I am. So purl. And, and knit one below. It's almost like it's an autopilot because the stitching, I've got it in my head, but don't quote me because when I screw up, then I'll create those big bad boy words. <laughs> the other thing I've learned in knitting too is that um, when you make a mistake, don't panic. Um, I'm really good at panicking and, 
and frogging my workout means to rip it, rip it. Um, it's not as easy as crochet when you make a mistake, so I, I think that's why I like to uh, let everybody in the universe know that I made a mistake. Once you get your last three on here, you're going to purl your last one, or your third last one, and then you're gonna knit your final two. And then we're gonna go and talk about the pattern again because now we're gonna do a decrease on both sides going forward. So it will look like you've just created a rectangle shape. Just don't mind this. It's just because the needle is still on, okay? But it, you're creating a rectangle shape here. So let's check that off in the list and let's move on in the pattern. So now keep repeating one through four until you get to 58 inches. It can be anything that you want as long as you land on a fourth one. Uh, a fourth row to begin then the final here and they're both going to be decreasing at the same time. So my little worksheet the final here for making it a decrease on both sides so they're both going to go at the same time. Uh, we have rows number one two three and four and I have to admit when I first started filming this I didn't realize it was a rectangle because you know I'm a half wit. So the first row here is going to knit the first one and then purl two together and then you were just going to then knit the remaining of the row across and then the final three stitches you're going to purl two together and then the last stitch is going to be a knit one and this will be the same for uh, one and three and one and three is, is the right side of the work if you want to know that number two when you get to it you'll knit the first two so k2 and then you'll knit one below purl one knit one below purl one and you'll continue that all the way the three last stitches the third last one will be knit one below and then you'll knit the final two. The third one here is going to be uh, the same as number one. So you're noticing the decrease is only one and three. So rows number one, three is when it actually decreases. So two and four is just maintaining the stitch work to let it keep balance. Number four is knit the first two, purl one, and then K1B, purl one, K1B across. And then the final last three stitches are the third last one is uh, purl one and then knit the final two. And you want to continue to repeat now rows number one through four until four stitches remain on the needle. So it doesn't matter um, really the, where you're going to finish off at this point. You just got to continue to do this and you should get yourself down to four um, stitches by the time you go through the sequence here and just keep on going through it. So let's try row number one of the final of doing the decrease. So let's do a number one of the final decrease. So both sides are going to decrease at the same time. So rows number one and three are the same and they're the right side of the work and you can tell by the stitch marker as well, if that you need to know that. So you're gonna knit the first one and then you're gonna purl two together. Okay. And so you're gonna just grab the next two stitches from the front side here and purl and move them off and now you're going to whistle your Dixie over until the last three stitches remain on there and so you're just going to continue to just to knit so you don't have to worry about anything else just knit and be happy are you knitting happy I don't know <laughs> I'm, I'm beyond the point where I I am I've gotten rid of the self-doubt that I know that I can knit now. Um, the question is, do I want to knit? That's the, the reality. And uh, so, but I'm going to continue with it because I'm, I'm actually enjoying learning something new for a change. Uh, crochet, pretty much how many times can you alternate between single crochet, double crochet, and etc. So this is kind of giving my brain some exercise. So now you get the final three stitches that are left. So you're going to purl the first two that you have there. Okay, you get that off and then you're gonna knit the last one. So you've just eliminated stitches on both sides. So you've eliminated two stitches altogether. And this was then row number one. Go to your check sheet, check it off. And let's do number two. Number two, let's begin and you're going to knit the first two so we're not doing any decreases on rows number two and four. So you're going to knit the first two. So I'm finding with knitting, you really can't rush things. You just got to continue to go with the flow. So then you're going to knit one below and you can see the line here. So we know everything's good. 
and then you continue the sequence then of purling the next and knitting one below all the way to the other side until you see the last three stitches that are left. So I think my biggest thing when I was learning to knit is just to be able to look at the stitches and identify exactly what I'm looking at. Crochet, I can do that pretty easily because you know, I got like 30 some odd years of experience in this here, I've got like a few weeks. I do like the knit one below though. I think that's something that I might have to enjoy more later. So I'm looking for the last three to be on here, which currently it is. So we're going to knit one below on the third last one to keep the sequence going. And then the final two is a knit uh, in each. So knit stitch for each. And this was row number two. Turn your work and check that off on your list. And let's begin number three. So number three, we're going to knit stitch just the first one and then we're going to purl the next two together so it's the same as number one okay and now we're going to whistle dixie and we're going to then just knit the remaining until the last three show up so every time we do a decrease row we are simply just eliminating stitches so you're going to get faster and faster towards the ending of your blanket as we do this so you got my three so you're gonna purl the next two And then you're going to knit the final last one. And turn. And that was number three. You can check that off on the list. Let's begin number four. Number four, you're going to knit the first two. And then you are going to then purl the next one. And then the next one after that is a knit one below. And so the sequence keeps on going now. I think the trick is just understanding how to start a row and how to finish a row and everything else in between is just alternating between the two. Duh, finally get it near the end. So I get my third last stitch. So this is number um, four. So the next one is going to be uh, a purl one. And then the last two are gonna be a, a, a knit stitch for each. So K2, knit two. And this was row number four. So you can see here, we've now got a new corner here. We've got everything going on here and everything's looking fun and fabulous. And we're gonna continue then, and I'm gonna start back at number one again. Let's begin row number one again. So we're going back in the sequence, and we start, and we're going to knit the first one, and then we knit the, oh sorry, then we purl the next two together. And then we whistle Dixie and knit until we can see the final three stitches on here. So because my size is much smaller, I'm already getting close to that point. I actually can't even believe I'm doing this. I'm actually kind of proud of myself a lot. Okay, last three stitches. So the next two are gonna be coming up row two together. And then the last stitch is gonna be a knit. And that was number one all over again. And check that off on the list. Let's keep on moving. Row number two.
So row number two is going to be a knit the first two together, or the first two on their own. And then we drop down for the next one as a K1B. Okay, so just come in here, go knit one below. And then purl. And then knit one below and keep doing the sequence, alternating between the two until you see the last three stitches. Okay, there's three stitches left. So the next one here is going to be a K1B, the third last one. And then you're gonna knit the final two. Turn your work and check that off on your list, number two. Let's move on to number three. So as turning around, I realized like I have to keep on going until there's seven stitches left. I've been saying four, so I've been putting up a video correction. I think it's just because I'm hung up because these roads are like one through four. <laughs> okay, so let's do number three here. So sorry about that. So number three is we're gonna knit the first one and then we're going to purl the next two. So I'm realizing that I'm not able to get down to four stitches. I'm like, okay, I don't understand. So I realize I've been misreading the whole time. Okay, so we've got the purl two together, and then we're whistling Dixie of knitting all the way back to the other side, except for the last three stitches. We gotta take those into account. Okay, so they got the last three, so you're gonna purl the next two together. And then knit the last one. And then we're back to a fourth row for next time. So that last row just got us to seven and every other row we don't do a decrease. So this row here, number four, is not a decrease. It's just a, maintain, a maintenance. So we're just going to knit the first two. And then purl one after that. Okay. And then we're going to then continue our sequence. So then knit one below and we keep doing this until there's three stitches left which is currently so the one right below, uh, before this is a purl one so the third last one is a purl one and then the last two are knit two and we still have seven loops here which is good because we weren't decreasing and now we're going to finish the final section to square this off we're now here at the very end and the last four rows are is going to be what's here. We have a PSSO uh, and this here is short form for past slip stitch over. So we just wanna make sure that we're paying attention to that uh, when we're going to do that and that's what we're going to do. So let's begin and we're gonna start this row number one and then continue with these last four. So in the very final section here, we're gonna um, start and we're going to knit the first one. And then we're going to purl two together. So we'll put that, oops, my apologies. Okay, if that happens, do not panic. <laughs> okay, let's try again. And so we're gonna knit the first. Let's begin and we're going to start and we're gonna knit the first one. Just like that. And then we're going to purl the next two together. that and then we're going to knit one and then purl the next two together just like that and then we're going to knit the final one so we just now eliminated out seven stitches to five let's turn and let's begin the next row the next row, we're going to start and we're gonna knit the first two. So it says K2, so knit the first two. And then it says slip stitch one. So in order to do a slip stitch one,
So the next one says slip stitch one. So you're going to slip stitch knit wise. So you're just going to go into there as if you're going to knit it and just move it right on over. So don't do anything with it. You're then going to continue and you're going to, um, what do we have here? So then the next one is going to be a K1B and you can see that the lines work out. Okay, so get that going. K1B. And then it says to purl one. Like that. And then you have one left, you're going to knit that last one. and turn your work and let's begin the next row. So your super genius is back and I've got myself stuck on the second last row. So I contacted the Yarn Inspirations design team. I have a direct gateway into that. But if you ever have questions on Yarn Inspirations patterns, you can always contact customer service because the people that are in the phone services there or the email know how to crochet and knit. So, you know, me, I'm still learning. So I was questioning knit one, slip one, knit wise, then K2 together, so knit two together, and then PSSO K1 and uh, on this farm, they had some pigs, E-I-E-I-O. <laughs> so I was like, oh my goodness, like, do I even have enough stitches? So anyway, I had to pause filming and get a hold of somebody over there because I don't know what I'm doing. So let's do this, and it's so simple, it's so silly. Mm -hmm. So we're going to start and we're going to knit one. So we know how to do that, so that's good. So we're gonna knit one. And then it says to slip stitch knit wise, which I know how to do, I know that's shocking itself. So we're gonna grab this stitch here and we're just gonna go in and pretend to knit. So do the invisible wrap and just use this needle on the right and pull it off. Mm -hmm. We're then going to uh, knit two together. So stick this needle, nah, I can tell you where to stick it, but uh, stick this needle in and catch both of those. <coughs> if you catch both of them, then you're going to knit. And you're going to slide off. Then the PSSO is taking this one here that we slipped and we're going to pick it up and we're going to go over top of this one right off the needle. You can tell I've not practiced. <laughs> so we're gonna come up over and just kinda, of, and if you kinda of hold on to this strand from what I can tell, and I'm gonna go right up and over. And then Gail says to knit the last one. Look at that. We're supposed to have three stitches left. Wow. There is hope for me at the end of the day. We're gonna turn on work and we're gonna do our final um, row. So the final row is that we are just going to go in and we are just gonna slip one. So just slip, so to go in and, oh my goodness, that's so hard. And now we're going to knit two together. So we're gonna put these two together. And then it says PSSO and then fasten off. So we're gonna take the first one and we're gonna come up and over. So I'm gonna hold back this to prevent it from sliding all the way off too. And then that's it. That's it, we're done. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, so I wanna take this and trim. And before I do anything further, I wanna just pull this loop up and I want to insert this strand through the loop. If you don't, it's all going to fall out on you and therefore you'll really create some serious words. And you know, my ears can't handle words like that. <laughs> so now you're going to take um, a tapestry needle that is currently somewhere on my desk and we want to secure all the tail ends in. Okay, so you're just going to go in and to secure in, don't weave it in with your hook or your fingers. 
do the stitch work and get it onto a tapestry needle. It's better if you can split plies apart when you go to do this. And if you have multiple colors, just only slip stitch in the same color line so that you don't see it. And when you pull the first one, don't pull it to the point that you are changing the shape of your project. Okay. So once it's pulled through the first time, go through a different section and go back in the direction from which you came. I can't believe I got it stuck on the second last row. Okay. I was doing so good up until that point. Okay. And then finally, the last one, I'm digressing. <laughs> More like whining. <laughs> and that's it. So you're going to weave in your ends. So any ends that you'll end up with, you want to do the same thing. Um, there are videos on how to change over your yarns if you need that, or changing color, or changing your yarns out if you run out. And so it is extremely stretchy. It is fun. It is fabulous. Um, I'm a hip. I'm cool. I'm 45. <laughs> if only. I'm 49. But that's it. And that's it. I know it's over. I'm actually kind of sad it's done. And um, really, really thick. It's thick yarn. But um, look at the beautiful lines on that. Guess who uh, knitted that? This one.